In this video, which is part of the skeleton, we just go over some important details. So numbers, names and terms, important details that you sometimes overlook and appear on exams. The first thing to know is that the skeleton is made up of two parts. Firstly, there's the axial skeleton that consists of the bones in the skull, the spine, the rib cage, and including the sternum. And then there is the appendicular skeleton, which consists of the bones of the limbs, the arms and the legs, and then the pectoral girdle and the pelvic girdle. There are 206 bones in the adult skeleton, both male and female. It's important to know details on the rib cage, the number of ribs and their names in particular. So if we look at this diagram, you should be able to know and to recall that there are 12 pairs of ribs. Pairs 1 to 7 are known as true ribs because they attach directly at the front to the sternum, to the breastbone. That's really important. And then pairs 8, 9, 10, they're false ribs because they do not attach directly to the sternum. They attach to the seventh rib. And then there is the last two pairs, 11 and 12. They're the floating ribs. They do not attach at all to the sternum. Let's move on to the spine now and the bones of the spine. It's otherwise referred to as the vertebral column. And there are 33 bones. They are called the vertebrae. And we have to know important detail. We have to know the regions of the spine and how many bones are in those regions. So we have this rhyme, Charlie tells Larry something clever. It was given to us by Gary, a former student. And we also have this phone number, 712554. And that helps us remember all of the important detail. So the first region is the cervical region and there are seven vertebrae. Then there's 12 in the thoracic, 5 in the lumbar, 5 in the sacrum and 4 in the coccyx. And it's important to know that the bones in the sacrum and the coccyx are fused. So there are important details, particularly related to the appendicular skeleton, and it's made up of those two girdles, the pectoral girdle and the pelvic girdle and the limbs. And they're referred to as pentadactyl limbs. That's an important term. Limbs that end in five digits. So your arms end in the five fingers and your legs end in the five toes. So pentadactyl, know what that means. Moving on to the bones in the hand, and it's really important that you know specifically what they are and where they're located. When you're thinking of the hand, think of to catch, because the first bones, the bones in the wrist, are the carpals, and there are eight of those. The bones in the palm of your hand are the metacarpals, there's five of those, and the bones in the fingers are the phalanges, there's 14 of those. You have to know the bones of the foot as well. And when we're thinking of the foot, we're going to think of T for toe because the first bones, the bones in the ankle, are the tarsals and there are seven of those. Then the bones in the foot, so the sole of your foot, are the metatarsals and there's five of those. And the bones of the toe are known as the phalanges again and there are 14 of those. Let's take a look at the pelvic girdle. The pelvic girdle is made up of two hip bones and each of those hip bones is attached at the back to the sacrum. So they are these two hip bones and they surround this open cavity. It's very important that you know that the hip bones are also referred to as the innominate bones and they're actually made up of three fuse bones. So each hip bone is in fact three fuse bones and you can see them here, one, two and three. So just remember that the innominate bones are the hip bones. So this video is really just a selection of the important details connected to the chapter on the skeleton. So always revise the whole topic, read your textbook, do past papers and check the official marking schemes. And there is a playlist with lots of other videos if they help. So the very best of luck.